good morning. Good morning. It is a good morning to be in the house of the Lord, right? It's always good to be in his presence. This morning I'm going to do, I think, what they call a scriptural sermon. There's a topical and then there's exegetical. And this is where I'm just using a scripture, breaking it down to do the whole sermon from. So uh, uh, this is a... This is a sermon that's been brewing with me for a long time, and uh, I, I titled it The Kingdom and Our Country because there's things going on with the country that's just been on my heart, so I, it all made sense to me how to put this all together, so it was time for me to give this sermon, amen? Amen. So we're going to look at one verse, and then we'll, uh, we'll look at some other things in the Bible, and uh and, and just to back up what I'm saying here, and uh, also some uh, things that are around this passage that we're, we're in. But, um, but I'm going to look at this one verse, I'm going to break it down, and it is Matthew 6, 33. And uh, if you don't know what that verse is, we were just singing it. So here it is. Let's go ahead and read it together. Matthew 6, 33. It says, But seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you that you sent Jesus into this world. And Lord, you came into this world and you showed us who you are. And Lord, we thank you that every word that you spoke that we have in our Bible, we thank you, Lord, that it, backs, it was all backed up when you went to the cross. And we thank you, Lord, that you exchanged your life for ours. And, Lord, we can now have your life, and we can live out the life that you have us to live, being in your presence. And, Lord, your presence breathed out this word. So, Lord, I ask that you speak to each and every one of us where we're at. I thank you, Lord, for the time of studying and, and, and meditation on this word. And I thank you, Lord, for the message you've given me. But, Lord, I ask that people will hear from you this morning and not from me. And, Lord, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor for everything you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So this morning, I want to just focus on this one verse, and I'll read it again. It says, but seek first. All right? So. The verse before that says, For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your Heavenly Father knows what you need before you seek these things. Before you need these things, right? That's the verse before it. And then it says, But. Do you guys know there's a difference between us and the rest of the world? One of the differences should be is that we operate like we know our provider. All right? Contrast. But seek first. So, there's some things we do. There are some things we do first when we become a follower of Jesus before we ever get to the shall of this verse. When we get to the shall of this verse, that's a very great word, and I'll highlight that when we get there. But there's a thing we do first, and then we get to the shall. First thing is, is that we operate in the kingdom power, which is contrary to this world, that tells you to get everything you can, right? The difference between those who have been to the cross and those who have not is that those who have not been there work in this life and operate in this life with selfishness. Now, the message we get from the cross is selflessness. That's how Jesus operated. He operated selfless. He put other people before him, and he ministered, and then he did the, like I said before, he backed up everything he ever said when he went to the cross. He backed up everything he taught. So we've been to the cross, and we understand it's not about our selfish ways. And, and by the way, selfishness, if you want to go all the way back to the root of sin, is where it came from. I want this. This is good for me. I will know what God has. Well, I will be like God. Well, yeah, that's, that's the root of sin. So, yeah, we are selflessness because now we've been to the cross. 
I just want to let you know I love our country. I do. I think it's the greatest country that ever existed in history. You study history, world history, you'll find out that there is no other country like our country. And it is a good country. Despite what people are saying, it is a good country. We've, we've even had young people come through our youth group. And they would say, this country is not a good country. And their grandmother, who comes to this church, corrected them and asked them, have you ever been outside of this country? And they said, well, no, Grandma, we've never been outside of this country. And they're like, well, how do you know that this is a bad country? This is a good country. Amen. But this country is ran by, this, by the spirits in the atmosphere and the god of this world, which is the devil. So our country will tell us wrong things, which is something that we need to understand. We will never get this from our king. We're in a kingdom. All right? Seek first the kingdom. All right? The thing about being in a kingdom is there's a king. And what he says goes. There's no debate. There's no, let's put this up for a vote. We listen to what the king says. Now, we live in a country that, it, that does have a democracy in play. Where we're actually a republic, which I'll talk about here in a little bit more. But the king is to be heard and listened to. And we get to be in this kingdom, which is power, is operating presently in this world. The, the kingdom is not here yet, but we are in the power of that kingdom. All right? So, going on from that... Our country can tell us to do the wrong thing, which is something we'll never get from our king. Elect, elected officials do not know the whole truth of any matter. All right? So, man can say what they want to say, and I'll tell you, do not listen to what man says unless it's lining up with this truth. Then you go with it. Amen? There are people who mean well, and there are people who don't mean well, and I'll talk about them in a little bit. But... It is always good to check with the spirit when making any decision in life. We got to hear from our King Jesus. We have to. It's imperative. The Pentecostals of old will tell you, well, we got to be led by the spirit. Yes, be led by the spirit because that is our king who is telling us what's up. He won't lie to us. He knows everything. He's sovereign. Amen. 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 So, the kingdom of God is here, but it's not yet. So, we're now going to have a theological discussion here. So, you, you, you can sound smart like you've been to Bible college. Whoopie do. All right. We're just remember, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble, as you now know biblical theological things. All right, here we go. The kingdom power is here and has not fully come into the seen natural world so when jesus showed up he's his he showed up in the kingdom power and started to destroy the kingdom of darkness when you read what jesus does in the four gospels that's what you're reading you're seeing him destroy the power of darkness with the kingdom power that is now here. The kingdom power, as I've experienced it, was one time when I went to a hospital. As a pastor, I do get called to the hospital. <clears throat> now that COVID is a thing, it's a whole lot different scenario, but I still do it. As I can, when I can, when the hospital allows, you know, has less restrictions, I can show up there, of course, wearing a mask. But... Before all that ever happened, one time I was called to the hospital. And there was this lady, and her name was Jennifer, not the Jennifer who sits up front here, but, but another Jennifer. And her cousin, Connie, you guys might remember Connie Boone. Her cousin called me and says, I need you to come up here and pray with Jennifer. I said, okay, I will be there. I walked to the halls of, those, of the hospital, and what I always did was I would pray as I drove up there, and I would pray in the spirit as I walked through the halls. 
I walked into the room. There was this young lady. I say young because she was 40, and I'm 43 now. <laughs> and at that time, I was the age of 38. And that comes into play because when I walked into that room, the first thing this woman said to me is, I am 40 years old. I am too young to die. And me being 38 that, at that time, I said, yes, that is not a time to die. She was very distraught and very upset. So I said, well, let's pray. So I prayed as I knew how to pray. And church, it was like God put his hand down into that room, that hospital room, and with a pitcher of peace. That's the only way I could describe it, and just poured it out on all three of us in that room. Pretty soon she was, she was starting to go, what in the world? And me and her cousin Connie were like, it's the Holy Spirit. Just enjoy it. And we just, you know, we just kept on praying. And she said she had a headache that she had all day long, and it was gone. That was the thing she noticed right off the bat. Um, she now lives down the road from me and waves at me as she drives by. So, so, yeah. So that is the kingdom power. That is the power that we can operate in, and we can destroy the kingdom of darkness. This power is here to destroy the power of darkness, which is, again, what Jesus did in ministry. Again... We are to seek first the kingdom, right? A kingdom has a king, and his word is not up for debate. As I already said, it is not to be voted on. It is not a democracy. It is to be followed. Our king has given us his word, and his word is scripture. You can bank your life on it. You can bank your eternal life on it. You can even bank on it. <laughs> As in money. We'll talk about provision in a bit. Right? You can trust this word from our king who doesn't lie and knows everything. Now, our country is a republic, which means that it's more than a democracy. It is a government with representatives, checks, and balances. That is great, awesome, and I love that we have it. But our country is not our King Jesus. All right? John Adams, one of the founders of this country, our founding fathers, said, Our Constitution was made for only moral and religious people. Well, I'm going to start talking about relationship. Because in the modern day time, we, we, the word religion's gotten ugly. And we say, well, it's about a relationship. Yeah, it is. It's about a relationship with our King. Our country, if it keeps going the way it's going, won't hold up despite how good of a constitution we have. Because it was made for people who have a God conscience. Church, we so need a revival. We so need a revival. The good news is the kingdom will last forever. But unfortunately, our country will not. All right? Some people argue that the United States is not mentioned in Revelation, so some people believe 